Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. This video is gonna be kind of a two-parter. With the first part, we're gonna take a look at an enclosure I purchased on Amazon recently, specifically for a certain spider I wanted to rehouse. Now, with the Amazon purchases, I know a lot of us are constantly on the lookout for new enclosures. You hop on Amazon, you see things that you think might work out, but you're afraid to spend the money on them. So I don't mind every once in a while picking one up, trying it out, and telling people what I think about it. The second part of the video will feature me rehousing my Harmonicon, Oi Pokei, I believe that's the correct pronunciation of it. You'll hear me pronounce it like 30 different ways in this video. Anyway, this is a curtain web spider from French Guiana, and I've heard mumblings that they could be found in Brazil as well. It's in the family Diplurodi, which also includes other curtain web spiders like Linotheli species. They are heavy, heavy, heavy webbers and big, big, big spiders. Not to be confused with true spiders. They're kind of in between true spiders and tarantulas, and they live much longer than the true spiders. So enough of me talking. Let's take a look at this new enclosure and a pretty cool spider, I think. All right, so while looking for an enclosure for some of my adult Linotheli species the other day, I was looking for something that gave them some size, decent sized tank. I stumbled across these. Now, before we get into the name, it's actually on the package that I absolutely adore. They were listed under Reptile PC Polycarbonate Glass Terrarium. The dimensions are 15 by 10 by eight inches, and they were pretty pricey. I was hoping they'd be a little bit cheaper. I was looking at one that was smaller. I think it was eight by eight by 12, maybe. And that one's like $49.99. This one sells for $83.99, so fairly pricey, but if it's, as, if it's got the features I think it has, it should be perfect for what I'm looking for, so I don't really care. So what we're gonna do is open this up, but first I have to point out the packaging. I did not know, I'm guessing this is a Chinese company because there's uh, Chinese writing on the side of it, and the fact that it just seems like something's off with the description. So the name of the company is actually Barbarous Growth BG, which I adore. I just did a an unboxing for Crapels or Crapellas or whatever it is. We never did figure out what it's called. And I thought the name was hysterical. I would have bought this for the name too because Barbarous Growth just sounds like, I don't know, like a bad anime character or something. I, it's, there's or somebody having over the course of the pandemic getting barbarous hair growth but i do like the packaging nice packaging crystal explosive proof glass it's the polycarbonate that's supposed to be a little more durable than the acrylic so what we're going to do is open this up here this has been sitting here for over a day and i've been dying to open it up so this is the top i guess here i'll take all this stuff up so what okay so i was just telling billy i think this is going to have a lot of extra crap in it that i don't need which is kind of a shame because i would have rather they tone down the price but there is a looks like light fixture here because this is something they when they show the picture of it there is a reptile in it and it has a little screen top for the heat lamp so that's pretty cool i'm sure i could probably use that for something food dish although that could probably make a water dish although i don't know what kind of paint is on this it looks like resin it looks like it should be safe could be a good tarantula water dish Resin hide, actually that's kind of cool. I might be able to use that popular hide cave, not to be confused with the non-popular ones, the unpopular <laughs> ones. Doomsday, pop, oh, popular, I can't read. <laughs> you know what, I probably should edit that out of there and not make myself look like such an idiot, but popular hide cave, I, none of it makes any sense. I mean, doomsday, what does that even mean? But that actually looks pretty cool. That could actually be usable. So we got that there, I'm assuming, this is a light bulb for the light, which is pretty cool. Ooh, okay, no joke, I don't need one of these, but that's actually pretty cool. A little spray, there we go, a little spray bottle, kind of awesome. And oh, everybody needs one of these. Actually, this can, I have a, a cage that could use this. I'm totally joking about that. It's a cheap thermometer slash hygrometer. Is it 79.2 in here? How accurate is this? 79.2, no, it's 83, so not very good. That's why we don't use these things. And here is the actual enclosure, so let's pull this out of here. Our barbarous, oops, I'm dropping stuff everywhere. So what I wanted was something with that was crystal clear that offered some depth, because obviously if I'm putting Linotheli species in here, they are going to burrow. It actually feels like the same material that they make. I'm gonna put this on the floor, because they make critter keepers out of. So there's the actual base of it. Let's take a look at the top. Not sure, these are the screws. So this goes, what we have here as far as ventilation, all of these in here, around there. None in the back, but it looks like we have a, oh! That's 
kind of cool. A little feeding port, and it's looks like it's magnetized, magnetized and spring loaded. So nothing's gonna be able to push out of it. That's actually very clever. I haven't seen that before. It's hot as heck up here. That's why my hands are all nasty. And then what we have here, this is not wire mesh. I will put the light on it. This is that stamped wire stuff that supposedly I've had no issues with tarantulas getting caught in it. So what happens is this goes on here. This would get affixed with these little teeny screw guys here. So you can take the top off. You want to take the whole top off or we've got this one here that lifts up, I believe and hurts your fingers. Not the most convenient thing in the world. It probably helps it. No. Oh, there we go. All right, it just wasn't doing it right. So there we go, so the top opening. I like this because I could put a spider in here, have it web the snot out of this. I got my little port here so I could put some food in there without disturbing it. And then I've got this that I could do the lifting up and cleaning without pulling off the whole top. So I'm thinking this is gonna work pretty well. Now obviously the Nathalie species get fairly large. They can do quite a bit of extensive webbing. The adults, I believe about four, four and a half inches or so. So I'm thinking there could, this could be a good situation, but we'll play it by ear and see how it works. But there we go. The, what is it? Barbarous what? I can't even think of it. Barbarous, barbarous growth, barbarous growth polycarbonate enclosure. I'm liking it. I mean, compared to the prices of the acrylics, it's right in line with some of the acrylics. I was actually looking at an acrylic one. It was going to cost, I think, one something. So it's actually a little cheaper than that. Really cool looking enclosure. We'll try it out. And obviously the next step will be to put a spider in it and see how the spider does. But I'm thinking this is going to work out pretty well. So cool new discovery. I may pick up another one. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I, the funny thing was when I went to buy this one, I think there was 12 up and I was just telling Billy that this morning I checked them out again and there was only five left. So somebody's buying these things besides me. So barbarous growth, polycarbonate, reptile slash, we're going to be using it for a spider enclosure. Pretty cool. All right, so we're about to rehouse my harmonicon. I'm going to try to pronounce this correctly, but I'm probably going to screw it up. Oya pokei or Oya pokei, uh, Oya pokei. It's got a lot of vowels in it. I know that it's a city in Brazil, which means it should be pronounced in Portuguese. But when I put, looked up the Portuguese, there were some extra vowels in it. So hopefully I didn't completely destroy it. Anyway, really excited to get this one out and into a permanent adult enclosure. I got these from Tom Patterson several months back, which reminds me I never posted the, <laughs> the video. I got to get that one up. There was a mix up in the middle of the video. We were tired, we were cranky, and I mixed up two of the species. It was just a bit of a nightmare, so I had to edit it, and I haven't gotten around to doing it. So we'll probably get that one up very soon. But anyway, these guys, I have it set up in one of these enclosures here, which is a Sterilite. They're about eh, six and a half inches by about five and a half inches by about seven inches long or so. They're kind of tapered, so it's kind of hard to do the dimensions, but I like these for juvenile tarantulas, and this one was a fairly good size when I got it. I think about an inch or so, a well-started probably juvenile at that stage, maybe a little smaller. I can't remember, I'll have to look back at the video. If I have the video of it, we'll put it up. But anyway, we put it in here and this is a heavily webbing species. So what we did is I put in some cork bark, but I also put in plenty of anchor points with some of the fake foliage we got here. So we have fake foliage air, fake foliage air, and I gave it a starter burrow. They are opportunistic burrowers. If given burrows, a lot of them will start from the burrow. They'll begin their lives in the burrow, start webbing out from the burrow. And this is a curtain web spider, hence the copious amounts of webbing in here. This isn't even as crazy as it can get. I want to get into something new now because the only problem with these guys is every time you have to rehouse them, you tear up all that beautiful webbing and I feel bad about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to put her into this one over here, which is before I run this video, you will see the review for Barbarous Growth. <laughs> I love the name of those. But this one is about 15 inches by 8 inches, and when the top's on, about 10 inches tall. And again, what we have here is BioDude substrate, but any mixture of whatever substrate you use. Uh, peat, although I've been shying away from peat, cocoa fiber, regular topsoil, whatever you want. I've got a piece of cork bark. I did give her a little starter burrow in here, so hopefully she'll either bolt to here or bolt somewhere under here. I have the fake foliage. I was going to put some sticks and stuff, but this will give her a nice kind of place to start with her web and give her some anchors. And what hopefully will happen, we'll see, and what I will do is wait a week or so so she does some webbing, see what she does, so I can kind of do an update before I post this. But hopefully what she'll do is start either in here or in here and start webbing up and out, and then you'll start seeing the lines come out, and what they'll eventually do when they're adults is this whole thing will be filled with webbing. I will 
drop in a water dish, but it has been kind of fun with the water dishes because they tend to web over them very, very quickly. And I will show the top off when we get her in here. There was an issue at the top that I do want to point out that wasn't included in my review of it that I feel, feel like we absolutely need to mention. So what we're going to try to do here, and this is going to be fun, and by fun I mean not fun, is we're trying to, we're going to pull out the webbing, the fake plants and stuff. Her little burrow is in there, so I'm hoping what will happen is she'll just cower. Now I've read that they're not very good climbers, like tarantulas would be up and out of here. I've read they don't climb very well. We're going to be careful just in case. The paper towels, as always, are for if the spider gets out, a lot of times what they will do is they will panic and they will circle. They're under these bright lights. They're going to try to hide, and the paper towel gives them a little security. So sometimes what you can do is take the paper towel out and then cup them. So here we go. No, oh, there she is right in there. I don't know if you can see her. And this webbing is strong. Oh, she's upside down. So let's get this out of our way. You know it gets serious when my voice all of a sudden gets quiet. Because go from screaming to... Oh, oh. Hoping to get a picture if even if we don't get any footage of her I did get a feeding clip that I posted on my shorts that I will run again in here uh, No way She's right there I don't know if you can see it. The red carapace on this, these are so striking and those legs will darken up. So you get like, almost remind me of, whoop, no, we want to stay in here. Almost remind me a bit of Bumba, what is it, Harita now. It used to be Bumba Cabocla, but Bumba Harita always reminded me of a true spider. And when I first saw one of these, it reminded me a lot of Harita. So what we're going to do, I think the best way to probably go about this, oh, oh. Let's so get this whole thing in. Can I do it? Hmm, maybe not. Oop. Oop, there we go. All right, so let's see if maybe we can tease her out in the open a little bit. I don't like to use the word tease, but. Are you getting any shots of her? Yeah. You want to zoom in a little bit. I'll hold her here for me. I really want to get the spider. Oh, unfortunately, uh, doesn't seem to be focusing very well. There we go. Gorgeous, gorgeous spider. This is excellent. I'm so glad we're getting shots of her. It's actually very well behaved. Now, these guys get quite large like four inches or so. I'm gonna get this out of the way. I will be here with the brush. Okay, doesn't look like she can climb the plastic. Maybe I, I can feel your heartbeat. She's gonna make, she's gonna make a break for right it though. Jump right toward my camera. <laughs> All right, so they can climb the plastic a little bit, but we're not gonna let her. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get the top ready so Billy doesn't have a heart attack with this one. She comes shooting out and we'll talk a little bit about the, actually, let's see if we can shoo her on over. You're gonna go over here. There we go. That should keep her a little occupied. So anyway, as I said before, she was about three quarters of an inch, an inch or so. I'll have to look back at the footage, which is pretty well started. But again, it's a relative of the Linotheli species, so they're kept very similar. I do provide them with moist substrate, but I don't overdo it. So what I will do is probably keep stuff in here kind of moist and let things over here dry out a bit. And she's still, where is she? She's oh, underneath right the burrow. She's oh, right there. So perfect. You can okay. take that out if you want. Okay, let me grab that out. They eat great, and the nice thing is, I found that they tend to close off their burrows with webbing when they're not when they're in pre-molt, which is great because that way, when you drop something in and they're in pre-molt and you don't know it, because they don't necessarily fatten up like a tarantula would, that protects them. And I have had a couple instances where I dropped something in, kind of expected to eat, came back and checked a few hours later, realized that the burrow was completely sealed up, and then I was able to pluck the item out. One case, I dropped the item in, didn't realize that it was molting. And the spider, again, it couldn't get to the spider, which was fine. Temperatures. Temperatures in the colder months here are about mid-70, 74, 75, but they do sometimes drop to the high 60s, just not for very long. Uh, where was I? 
is going to be like this huge awkward pause in it that I'm going to try to use the footage because the footage is probably better because the light's on. Now the leash is, she's like hiding the leash oh, now she's so I can okay. see her now. All right, we tried to put the light on there to get some better footage of her. Oh, she's coming out. So temperatures in the summertime are usually in the mids, I mean the wintertime are usually mid 70, 74. We usually keep the temperature right around 73, 74. However, we have had some issue when it gets super cold out with the heat not keeping up here and it will drop to the 60s. Not for very long, but she's done. they've done fine in those kind of temps. This summer, it's been very hot up here. So 80, 84 degrees most days. Eat great as babies. They will eat little red runner roaches. I haven't had to use uh, fruit, fightless fruit flies with any of them. I've usually started off with the red runner roach nymphs, and they'll take down pretty good sized prey, which is awesome to watch. Again, super fast. And what they will do is build up those curtains of webbing. They'll burst forth from the curtains of webbing, grab their prey at them, and scoot right back in. It's a blast to watch. Again, as for moisture, you want to keep it a little bit moist. They are found in French Guiana and apparently Brazil. I had wondered about that because obviously the name is off of a Brazilian city and luckily somebody chimed in on the last video I posted the feeding video and said that yes they are found in Brazil so thank you for that so what I'm hoping will happen here is she will web up we'll get this whole thing webbed up and it'll work great because I'm gonna go ahead and put this on just to show how this works Boop. this one has a little magnetic door for feeding so what will usually happen is they'll start webbing up here they'll bring it down and this hopefully will be a free spot because if this gets all webbed up it obviously won't work now one thing I want to point out about this is these two while I was getting this ready I found two little holes on either side I got a funny feeling what these are for is running cords through if you have like a heat rock or something in there because these are not necessarily for tarantulas what I did was just cut up some plastic and super glued it on the top over it but I have to say that takes this down a couple points as far as the price point. They were about 80, what was it, 80 bucks, 85 bucks. I know I'll say it in the video that goes before this where I review them. But, uh, you know, for something I spend that much money on, I really don't want to have to make alterations to it. So will I buy another one of these? Probably not unless I get them super on sale. But it is kind of a nice enclosure. I do think she'll look great in here. And it is crystal clear. So that will do it for this one, Harmonicon. Oya Pokei, Oya Pokei, it's, it's got so many vowels. I know somebody, if anybody knows how to phonetically pronounce this, please chime in. I will truly appreciate it. Just don't make fun of my pronunciation too badly. And we will do an update video in about a week to see how she's got on as far as the webbing's concerned. All right, so here we are about five days later, and as you can see, she's already gotten to webbing up this enclosure, which is great. She's settling in very, very well. If we take a look at the top here, hopefully what shows is the webbing all around in here. She actually used the little pre-started burrow I gave her right in there underneath the cork bark. That's where she hid and then started coming out and webbing from there. We've got web all over the plants, all around the burrow entrance. If we look down here, we've got it around the water dish. So I got a funny feeling that water dish is going to be covered in webbing and buried very soon. But she's definitely settling in quite well. Now she's eaten several times since I put her in here. So she's definitely on the prowl. I'm going to go ahead and drop a couple roaches in, see if we can get her to hunt. But she may not because of the light. We'll see. And there she goes. Perfect. So there we go. Harmonicon, Oi Pokie, doing well and settled in. All right, so as I mentioned in the video, I did have people come forward and tell me that they are found in Brazil as well. However, when you look them up in World Spider Catalog, it only lists French Guiana. Now, could they be over there? Absolutely. However, I'm not sure if maybe they are confusing them with Harmonicon rufusins, which is a similar species and a similar looking species. Who knows? So if anybody has more information on that, please chime in in the comments. If somebody gives me good info, we'll definitely pin it because I want to make sure that this is as accurate as possible. Now, as far as these guys are concerned, they're not particularly good at climbing glass or plastic. As you can see, a tarantula would have been up and out of that thing, no problem. These guys kind of skitter away. However, if there's webbing or debris on the side of the plastic or glass, they can use that to grip and get up. But that should be taken into account as far as we housings are concerned because they're a little easier to handle despite the speed. 
So yes, are they faster than many species of tarantulas? Absolutely. However, the fact that they struggle to get up glass and plastic and can't really climb it very well makes it a little bit easier, at least as far as I'm concerned with those rehousing. So for folks that have been eyeing these, they're afraid they're not going to be able to deal with the speed. Keep that in mind, nice deep bin, and you would have plenty of time to work if one should get out during rehousing. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, you know the routine now. Click the little circle up there. I'm going to put some more videos over in here. If you take the time to comment, no, I'll take the time to respond. Just know it could take a couple of days. That'll do it for this one, guys. As always, stay safe. We'll catch you all next time.